rattle them bars. It's Friday night. It's the prison show coming to you. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on tonight. Uh, we've got Yancey in the house. We've got Terry LeClerc on the phone. We've got Dave Atwood, I believe, calling in. Uh, and we've got Karen Weir with us, who uh, started volunteering for us uh, at the prison show goes to rehab and turned out to be a great volunteer so thank you thank you and uh ladies why don't y'all say hi to everybody hola buenas noches todos los que nos escuchan uh, es una bendición este día es poder saludarlos dios los bendiga en esta noche y hola mi amor juan uh, siempre es un privilegio uh, saludarte en esta noche mi amor Hello, everybody. This is Karen. I want to say hi. I hope everyone's having a good night and doing well. Okay, well, now, without wasting any more time, I just want to thank everybody for listening to the prison show. Uh, David was talking about in our little pre-show meeting how many hits we've had on Facebook, watching the videos now that we're doing these things, uh, Facebook Live. We've also got a crew that's doing a Discovery Channel uh, documentary uh, about Yancey and her doings and uh, the situation with uh, Latinos and Hispanics on death row and the troubles uh, that they experience, which, you know, they, they tend to be kind of universal troubles for guys on death row, but there are also specifics to it that uh, affect them a little differently. So I, I'm glad they're in the house. I'm glad they're doing that. It's a nice thing for the prison show to be included in things like this. So uh, thank the crew and thank you, Yancey. Thanks the prison show for doing what you do. Well, you know what? Well, we, we love what we do. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, now let's go ahead and get with Miss Terry LeClerc, uh, author, professor, uh, gad about town, uh, rambler around Europe and everywhere else. Terry? As you might imagine, we had more reality than we had theory. theory. So the weather was fast paced. This is a and zero, zero. I was so honored to be a part of that way. conversation, yeah, so and I hope it results in an independent oversight. I'm not in it. Right. Okay. Anyway, so back yeah. his head and the board. I joined speakers from around the world in D.C. at the biannual storytelling conference. I heard some of the greatest speakers anytime, anywhere for five days. I, my own self, offered up the story of our Jean Valjean, Mr. Bernice Wilson. I don't know if you remember my story about him, but he was a petty thief. He was starving and drove away in an unattended truck full of bread. Before he had time to even eat some of that bread, he was arrested for kidnapping, theft, yada, yada. Inside TDC, he was blinded in a TDC boiler explosion, but wasn't given ADA protection. And you can imagine the results of being blind in TDC. Yeah, the TDC, uh, the Texas Civil Rights Project and several law firms finally managed to get him out, released him into a care facility where he died a few weeks later of unattended gangrene. 
I think you guys would be proud of the reception of the story, the sad and typical story. So many of those listeners went home to question their own prison officials. And so I feel like this was a real big step for TDC. Okay, someone named Scott from Polinsky wrote me, hey, I can't read your signature or your TDC number. Oh my guys, remember that penmanship is essential. In July, June, I, re I read almost 300 letters. Um, I'm honored each time to enter into your world, but occasionally I spend more time trying to understand your penmanship than understand what your grievance is or your conversation. Do you guys have that problem at yes. the radio? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. And guys, keep it short. Oh, I know. I read nine pages from a few people. <laughs> yeah. Now, your letters are more effective if they're short, sweet, and to the point. And so are the grievances. So there's a parallel there. Okay. Thank you with deep humility to Michael Maddox and the Huntsville unit for a stunning pencil drawing of Merle Haggard. Right now he's watching over me right in the computer as I speak. I feel like he's actually here with us. Mr. Maddox, you are one great artist, and I'm sorry to hear you've been disappeared again into the bottom of CDC. Several correspondents wrote worried about a college inmate who can't speak English but has been assaulted by officials. This is rumor, but really, federal and TDC policy requires a translator. So those TDC listeners who are, who are right here, right now listening to us, please attend to this inmate who has medical needs. And I suppose officials on Boyd Unit know that there's some PA there who hasn't read CDC policy on co-payment. Will somebody there pretty please educate your staff? All of us here would be grateful to all of you there. Okay, now about the um, prison show book club. Remember that to join us, all you have to do is read something, and that's about it. Write to me about your story or your novel. I'm going to give you my name, address, Terry, C-E-R-R-I, the clerk. L E capital C L E R C Q. My address 727 East 26th Street. That's 727 East 26th Street in Austin 78705. You write to me and then you're an official member of the book club. Isn't that the easiest thing you ever heard of? It sounds pretty easy to me. <laughs> Reading the book may not be so easy for me anymore, but. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, I can do it. You're this, impressed. <laughs> this summer, TDC readers seem to focus on true life crime and on African American literature and history. Thank all of you for teaching me about true crime, but I confess, I'm overwhelmed from all the letters declaring that you're not guilty of crime, so it's hard for me to read even more about true crime. Nope, nope, nope. You do that for me and you can report to me. Thank you very much. In African American literature and history, once upon a time, in a different lifetime, I actually taught American literature in the Nabilene College. <laughs> but what you're reading now and what you're responding to it now, well, that's a whole other education for me. And I thank you for the education. Finally, for those of you creative writers out there, I offer this. There's a new collection of short stories about the convict's flight that's receiving great press from all kinds of magazines. Curtis Dawkins has managed to publish something called the Gray Bar Hotel. How do you like that title? The Gray Bar Hotel. <laughs> 14 fictional tales from the Michigan police system, uh, prison system. Reviewers say, quote, wickedly skilled storyteller may lull you into thinking that life behind bars isn't so bad. But the boredom of prison shifts to horror and the emotional equivalent of a hammer blow to the head. How about that? Whew. So those of you who are writing, keep it up. If you're writing fiction, keep it up. Give the world your version of that hammer blow to the head, because all of us here at KBFT, we look forward to reading about it, reading your real-life experiences. So remember to send me questions, questions about grievances or opinions and writing and reports about your literary readings and anything you're writing. That's it from Terry LeClerc. 727 East 26th Street, Austin, 78705. How's that, Hank? That sounds good. That's exactly <laughs> what we need for people. And guys, I hope you had your pens and pencils ready. Uh, you know, every, every Friday night, have them ready for the show. Because, you know, when we have Terry on, there's always information, and you're going to need to write it down. 
And I'm out off and about trying to advocate for you guys as best I can. God bless each of you. Good night. How's Jack doing? Oh, he's great. He's writing a book about big pharma and all of its evils. Yep. Uh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> all right. Well, tell him we said hi. Have him on. He'll tell you all about it. All right. Well, tell him we I'll said hello. I'll give him hello. your best. Thank all of you guys. Keep up the good work. And everybody keep your chin up. All right. Night, Terry. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I guess we're ready for Yancey now. I'd like to take the time to talk about some of the things that the injustices that occurred in the ponds of in my husband's uh, trial. First of all, his rights were violated left and right, and um, starting with uh, eight and a half years of pre-trial incarceration, which it's a violation to our Sixth Amendment right for a speedy trial, mm -hmm. and um, and it should not be allowed at no point. Mm -hmm. No one should be waiting eight and a half years in a cell for a trial, and I don't think that there's has been anyone in Harris County that has waited um, eight and a half years, and. Um, Sorry. Yeah, you're supposed to have right to speedy trial, so. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and so I, I just don't understand um, how the system uh, allows these things to continue go, going on. And, um, and it's important to talk and let people know that, um, you know, this is not right and um, it should not be permitted. And someone should look at into this and um, it's something very serious, you know. Um, it's a violation of our constitutional right. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's not right. Uh, Juan, what's most, a lot of those years in solitary confinement um, without having the opportunity to go to school uh, to educate himself, um, to do anything to help himself um, prove his innocence. And um, it's been hard. It's been hard. Um, unfortunately, the DAs uh, work sweet deals with uh, other defendants, dropping cases, buying testimony. That's what it is. And that's what they do. And. Um, that's not right. That's not right. And we are, you know, demanding someone to look at this, demanding um, for them to correct this wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, it's just the games that the Harris County courts play. We see it way too often and way too many cases. And... It's, it's not right. <laughs> the, the extended periods of people being locked up before going to trial is one of the big reasons that people plea out on so many, uh, I don't know, a, an extremely high percentage. It's around 90% here in Harris County that go to plea bargain. And part of the deal is they stick them in there so long that the family's going broke, they miss their families, things like that, and they, they get a chance, we'll let you out sooner you know, in a lot of cases, and the people jump on the deal just so they can get out of jail. You know, never mind whether they have a chance to fight and uh, really prove their innocence, etc. Yeah, and, um, and why? Why do we allow this? You know, mm -hmm. why is this judicial system supposed to be the best? You know, in the world, right? But no, it's not. I've witnessed this. We've witnessed this. We we lived it. We, we continue living it every day, and um, we will not um, ever give up fighting. And 
Well, Yancy, you've been up here and you've volunteered for the prison show. You go to our events, things like that. And we want to be supportive of you too, which is exactly uh, why Debbie wants to bring you on here. And, you know, and we all agree. You know, and you're out there fighting. So, how's your school going? You, you, how far are you along? Um, I'm in school right now. Um, you know, uh, focusing in, in work. Uh, and, um, and I love it. You want to tell people why you're doing this? Well, uh, because of the injustices that I did, and um, you know that my husband has to um, live with, you know, every day with her, and, and this has been my motivation to. Tell people what it is you're going to school for. Well, God willing, um, you know, um, I'm working on my um, bachelor's for a um, political science and um, eventually become an attorney. And I work with, um, in my opinion, the best attorney there is. And that's a blessing. And Tell them who it is. Uh, Mr. Brick Gardner, and um, he is an amazing attorney, has um, stopped many executions, and he really fights for, for people. He's not um, the attorney who has a school. You know, I meet him so often, so many times, um, and there's someone that actually cares, and I'm just so happy to have the opportunity to to be part of that. Folks, she wants to become an attorney so she can continue this fight for one and others. So this is a person that's really giving of herself, giving a huge chunk of her life uh, to try and right some of these wrongs. Yes, and um, eventually prove my husband's innocent and have my husband home. Because we have to thank God in all moments and um, in the hard moments, we give thanks to God. And God has brought us to death row, and it's for a purpose. And I had the chance to meet wonderful people, wonderful people that I respect, I admire. Like Mr. Dave Atwood, like Ms. Pat Harwin, like Ms. Gloria Rubeck, uh, fighters against the death penalty, and they're out there talking to lawmakers in Austin, they're out there lobbying against the death penalty, they're out there protesting, we are out there protesting, protesting in the streets, executions, yeah. Yeah. and speaking up for those in there you know, um, to, to, to push for a change, and, you know, um, so we, we have to see the positive and the negative. Now, you were up at the row last night. Oh, it's yeah. actually... Oh, were you there? Yes, at the yeah. execution last night, um, I had the opportunity to, uh, meet Mr. Uh, Taishun's, uh, family. Oh, okay. And uh, there was no witnesses, not from the state, not from the media. Uh, nobody. Huh? Uh, there was media, oh. uh, but no witnesses from either side. Oh. And um, there were the family thanked us for being there because, like they said, a lot of times us uh, death row families, um, it, it's hard for. For others to understand what we're going through, and they just thank me for it because they feel and they know that I do understand and I do feel, mm -hmm. you know. And um, they thank us for being there. Um, they were hopeful. They were waiting. We were all waiting, uh, hopeful, um, until the Supreme Court 
came down with the ruling and um, denied him and he was executed at 922 yes and it's 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 sick it's it, sick it takes a toll on pretty much everybody and if, you know if, if nothing else you're a taxpayer and some of the money comes out of your pocket to uh, push these things through the courts this way then push the execution which triggers all kinds of legal battles because you have to give everybody every opportunity. Now, we're not real good at that here in Harris County, as you mentioned, but uh, it, it's great to have somebody that goes out and fights for it all the time. And I'm, I know Juan knows he's got a fighter in his corner. Oh, yes, he does. And we, I, I feel blessed with him. He gives me the strength, and I love you, Bobby, for this is super. Yeah. We, and this, and this, um, in this um, situation that we, we uh, live right every day, um, I came to know me, uh, my friend now, Karen, mm -hmm. and uh, Karen has been, um, you know, very supportive of not only my husband but others um, on death row, and um, I would like to also have the opportunity for her to share uh, her bot battle. Hello, thank you for having me here tonight. I want to talk about, I am in support of Juan Baderas, innocent on Texas death row. And also I want to bring to everyone's attention my husband, Colton Weir, who is incarcerated at the Wynn Unit in Huntsville, Texas. I also want to mention that he was manipulated by friends at the age of 15 and was convicted of murder. And on his 17th birthday in court, received a life without parole sentence. I, I want to make aware there are 1,600 statewide juveniles that could be eligible for the second look. I want that to be known. I'm working hard on that. I, um, there's only a few lawmakers that have recognized the flaw in the system. And, uh, I, and they have come up with a parole reform for the juveniles, which will give them a second look on their 20th year of a lengthy sentence. So I'll be talking about that tomorrow, and I'm working on that. Okay. And, and I just... So, yes, tomorrow yes. Um, we're having an event um, at um, the Shape Center. Yeah. Um, Over on Alameda? Yeah. Alameda? Yeah. No, at oh, Live the, Oak. Live oh, the Oak. other one. Um, okay. Safe Center at Live Oak. Live Oak, Houston, Texas, 77004. And, um, Google it, folks. You can get directions <laughs> yeah. straight to the spot. From 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. We encourage everybody to go yes, out. Yes, and it's, it's an event in support of Juan Valderas, Innocent on Texas Death Row. And um, everyone's... Um, welcome to come and join us and uh, show support and um, it's very important for us to do this because um, you know we need to um, any opportunity that we can talk about this injustices mm -hmm. and um, we'll, we'll be talking more about this tomorrow you know a lot of folks uh, just think well they're on death row so you know, and they, and they just automatically assume everybody's guilty. And nobody stops to think about the fact that we've had about 250 released from death row around the country because they were actually factually innocent. Exonerated. It's that easy to get innocent people onto death row. Especially with colored people and poor people. Yes. yes. Yeah, exactly. People of color especially. and the poor are especially. especially yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a message I've got to check real quick before I let you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we have to wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you all for coming in. Thank you for sharing your stories. And we'll definitely have you all back. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody, get out to the Shape Center on Live Oak tomorrow for this. What time? 3 to 8. 3 to 8. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Guest this evening, we we have a musical guest in the house. 
NBA. He should be coming in right, oh, right behind me. Behind you. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, no, don't ever let a rapper behind you. Oh, <laughs> never, never. I'm not right a middle for it, please. So, NBA, tell us a little about yourself. Well, my name is NBA. Um, I'm from Equatorial Guinea. I moved to the USA just for school. You know, uh, we met, uh, I met DNC. DNC and I met at the school, you know, um, and we went to a lot of things together, you know, to support Mr. Turner and all those things. And uh, that's, that's when she, she explained me about uh, the situation she was going through, you know. And actually, I was with, with my agent, and he, um, he, he, he asked me, you know, to be part of it and help, you know, and support DNC. And um, after she talked about the case, uh, you know, it's not hard to, you know, it's, it, like they say, it's not hard to find. You don't need to, you know, make any type of research, you know, to be, able to, to, to be able to to see that somebody's trying to tell you the truth, you know, telling the truth. You don't need to listen. Uh, so many different versions of the story. Just one version of the story will tell you this is true or this, uh, this is false. Mm -hmm. And based on what she told me, I believe in what she's saying and I, I believe um, crimes should be free, you know. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, uh, you have your manager with you? Yep. You want to introduce him? Fat Donkey. Hello. Hello, my name is Alex. Alejandro Arauz, Alex Arauz, and I'm here because Yancy, as uh, NBA had just said, we all went to the University of Houston together. We became great friends. You know, we we had classes together, exams, stress. And one day she just opened up and said, I'm going through a lot. And, I, you know, I didn't expect somebody to tell me her story. But her story that she told me, that's something, that's, it's something you see in a movie, you know? It's compelling. And it is. And I said, oh, my God. And she, she was so gripped. We were so gripped by what she was saying, and and I said to her, if there's any way in the future me and NBA can help you, we'll be there in a second. And she called us, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, and told us about the show and everything, and I said we're there, okay. and here we are. Well, have you got something prepared for us this evening? Yeah, I got some, you know, always ready, it's, you know. You do music, you need to be ready every time. People listen to music every time, so you need to be ready every time you're a musician. Well, I, I get after it. Well, wh what do you want to hear? Like, I uh, want to hear whatever you want to play, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever I want to do. Are you going to freestyle? I can freestyle. Do, do, that, do that rhyme. That yeah. You want made. me to do that rhyme? There you go. Yeah, yeah, I was in the back. You know, I was just, you know, I, 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 uh, we, I prepared a song. Juan, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get to record the song because I, uh, I'm expecting the studio time to, you know, to match my, my date. But uh, I was in the back, you know. Um, since I'm a rapper, I like to come around the, around people, you know, and, you know, kind of get their feelings, you know, and get to write whatever I want to talk about, you know. And uh, <clears throat> I was over there in the back, and I wrote some couple lines, you know, this is not part of the song, but you know, this is something that I wrote, you know, in the back, thinking, you know, thinking about what Yancy is going through, you know. And he say, No tengo miedo a morir. Me mata la rabia de morir por algo que no hice, pero me lo culpan a mí. Los que derramaron sangre corriendo libre y felices mientras que suplico misericordia a unos jueces. Aunque la esperanza de vivir es lo último que muere, digo vivir porque nadie vive si no es libre. Solo puedo ser responsable de mis acciones. Solo quiero pagar por mis acciones. Nunca cumplí los 20 porque vivo encadenado desde que tengo 19. ¿Por qué la justicia no me responde si estoy en vuestras manos y no queréis escucharme? Me quitasteis el derecho de ser padre. Preferís condenarme antes de defenderme. Todo el mundo que esté escuchando esto, everybody that is listening to this, you know, this is like, esto es un grito de, de libertad. The, the, the justicia, you know, this is, this is, this is a call of justice, you know, and equality, you know, like, like what they say, you know, justice for all, you know, so I think anybody that is going through this type of situation, before they judge the person, they, re they really need to check that person background, you know, because there's so many of us that we did not really have 
we did not really have that opportunity when we were growing up, you know. We, we, we got in the wrong place with the wrong people. We tried to do our best, you know. And um, as they say, you know, I'm not going to pay for whatever somebody else did, you know. So I think they should consider Juan Keynes, you know. He didn't do it. He, he was with the wrong people, but he didn't do it. So you, you cannot, you know. That, that right there, that make him a killer or murder. Mm -hmm. You know, just make it a kid, 19 years old boy, you know, 18, 17, 16 year old boy, you know, looking for, you know, protection, father figure, looking for a way to get around, you know, and whatever that, uh, 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 whatever area you grow in, that's what you're going to mostly, you know, become or get in touch with, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think all these type of cases, they should really reconsider those kids, you know, and think about it and give them a second chance because most of these kids, they do things that they don't even know they're doing them, you right. know, because they're not mature enough, you know, to really take time and and check out the, 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 the action they're about to take, you know. And the science backs that up. People, uh, a man's brain does not fully form until he's in his yeah. mid to late 20s. Yeah, so I think when these kids going through this situation, what we need to do is help them, not push them down, not put them in jail because we not, we have other kids going through the same situation. Especially if it's not the one that did it. Yeah, if it, yeah, especially if it's not the one that did it, but we have another kid went through those type of struggles. It's, it seems like, to me, you know, and you know, I've studied criminal justice, and the criminal justice system, as you know, it's a big fraternity. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you're in, you're in, you know, the process, the lawyers, the defense, and the prosecutors, they all know each other, they're all buddies, they have a drink afterwards. And if you're not part of that circle, you're done. And if you don't have money, or your parents don't have money to represent you and get you a good lawyer, then you just sit there in the can, and they'll just they'll just keep pushing it off, yeah. pushing it off because you don't have money, and money talks, and that's the American way. Yeah, but I want people I want people to listen to this and really think about the meaning of criminal justice, the meaning of justice, you know, because people decide, people make choice, and, and we need to really think the meaning of justice. The meaning of justice is not to put people behind bars or death row, you know. The meaning of justice, you know, is serve justice. If you innocent, even we have, even though we have to take five years to study your case and see that you innocent, that's what we're gonna take. And they took longer you in know, this case. Yeah. If we we have to, but we cannot put you behind bars just like that and make you, you know, and kill you in the meantime while you are alive. Because as I say, if you're not free, you're not alive. You know. People can see you talking. People can come and can go and visit you. But if you're not free, you're not living. You know, you're not living. You die in every moment you're in that cell. And you die every moment you see that officer and all these people that you don't know about. And you have nothing in common with, you know. Right. Uh, you, have you got another piece for us? We've got about two minutes left. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Dice que, yeah. Mi tío me dijo que la libertad lo más caro no tiene precio. Hijo mío, siempre piensa en el inicio. Nunca pierdas tus principios. El dinero es bonito. La calle también. Los crímenes atraen a todo el mundo. Pero los hombres de bien siempre piensan en lo más profundo. Nunca pierden el segundo en cosas que no tienen que estar haciendo. Sé que muchos nos equivocamos pero necesitamos segunda oportunidad para mostrar lo que sabemos hacer y lo que valemos. Free Juan Valdez. Free Juan. Free Juan. All right. Well, we've got to get on with the show. I thank you for coming in. We're going to have you back a great time. Uh, Yancy, you going to hang around too? All right, great, great. Thank you, everybody. And, thank all right. you guys for having us. And it looks like I've got the whole uh, documentary crew in here with me, too. You got, you guys want to come over here and say hi for a minute? Yep. Yeah, sure. and so, and also, I want to give a shout-out to Juan. Juan, we got your back, man. Don't worry, man. This nightmare is going to end soon. Okay? Have faith. Have faith in the Lord. I know you're very, mm -hmm. very spiritual. And God brought us here for a reason. This isn't an accident. Sí, Juan. Estamos todos detrás de ti, hermano. No pierda las esperanzas. 
si toda esta gente está aquí sentada y se ha reunido por usted es porque realmente saldrás libre y hay que creer, nunca pierdas la fe, hay que rezar a gente libre, si eres, si eres inocente no tienes que pensar mucho ni buscar otras maneras de mostrarles, ellos lo saben y se cansarán de culparte por algo que nunca hiciste y al final aceptarán que usted es inocente y saldrás libre. Juan. Gracias. All right. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take just one minute here and have the crew come over here and uh, shout, give, give your names and uh, shout out where you're from. Uh, hello, my name is David Beriaim. I'm the director of uh, Discovery Channel's uh, Discovery in Espanol uh, production. And we're doing a show about uh, a documentary. I don't like to call it show. Mm -hmm. um, about uh, the Latino city on the floor. And we're trying to look into um, what kind of challenges um, the Hispanic situa uh, population is uh, facing here uh, towards the, um, the justice system and especially uh, death penalty cases. Yeah, we have more of a legal system than a justice system. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just a It's foreigner. about the laws, <laughs> not about the justice. I don't, I don't want to... Um, I'm an alien here. I'm, I'm trying to set myself here. Uh, you know, free of uh, prejudices and trying to understand uh, a, a country that is not mine. But uh, we're following here uh, Jansi's case because it's just so compelling. And it's just um, a person that we came to admire in the time we're sharing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a privilege to do this job. Well, thank you all for coming in. Thank you for working with her. I've got to move on now. We've got Dave waiting on the line to give us death penalty news. Seems to be the focus of the evening. Dave, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Hank. Thank you for asking. She has I said hold, yeah. Doing okay. Doing all right. Yeah. You already got them on hold? Well, we're yeah. up here in the high country. Okay. You know. on hold. You're yes, right. you're in Colorado. Yeah. No pun intended. Once you got everybody on hold, country, huh? you can pull up yeah, right. each window by going alternate. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank you, you talk, for the you show tonight. Uh, uh, one, but then you got thanks, to uh, Yancey, for you want to be answer the phone. Her courage to, to be up. there to speak out for Juan's case. Um, if every guy on death row had a person like Yancey, they would be really blessed. I uh, want to thank the Discovery Channel for doing this documentary. Very important to get the word out, and they're a very important um, channel for doing that. also want to thank uh, MBA for his words on and his friend there for second chances for especially young people uh, who get pulled into the system at such a young age. They all should have opportunity. They, you know, nobody should get a long prison, you know, a life sentence or Certainly not the death penalty, and so I want to thank all of them for their words. And uh, moving moving along, uh, shout out to all the guys on death row um, who are listening in tonight. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm so very disappointed that Texas had another execution recently, an unnecessary execution. None of them are necessary. And our hearts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Tai Chin Cryer um, for having to go through what they went through recently. Um, there was a really good article on Tai Chin's case by Governor Mark White, former Governor Mark White in the Houston Chronicle recently. And I want to I read part of it because I think it brings out a lot of salient points about the death penalty. It was titled uh, Halt, Execution, and Fix Over Injustice. And I would, my, my title would have been Halt, All Executions, and Fix Over Injustices, because there are a lot of injustices in the system. But this is what uh, former Governor Mark White wrote. And I'm quoting him now. We have had the case of the sleeping lawyer then came the case of the drunk lawyer. Now we have the case of the disbarred lawyer in Tai Chin's case. As governor of Texas, I authorized 19 executions. Since then, I have seen many cases of profoundly deficient lawyering for people who are sent to death row. And I think Governor White is pretty much a 100% opponent of the, of the death penalty now. Um, 
But what happened to Tai Chin Pryor, who is scheduled for execution on Thursday, that was yesterday, is beyond the pale. Pryor was convicted of a murder in San Antonio and sentenced to death in 2005. His mother, Margaret Mendez, would do anything to save her son's life. A longtime employee of the U.S. Postal Service, she did not have the hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on a dream team to get her son's conviction reversed. Mendez's niece introduced her to Philip Jefferson at a Thanksgiving dinner in 2007. Jefferson presented himself as a retired lawyer. In reality, he had been disbarred in California almost 20 years earlier. He claimed to be associated with Johnny Cochran, who famously won a not guilty verdict for O.J. Simpson. And Mendez was understandably impressed. He said that due to his retired status, he would have to bring in an associate to sign and file documents. Thus began an extraordinary fraud, not only on Pryor's, Pryor's mother, but also on the courts. The lawyer who worked at Jefferson's direction, a woman named Brandy Estelle, had a probate, estate planning, and real estate law practice. She had no experience in death penalty cases. No one will be surprised to learn that the representation the disbarred Jefferson and the unqualified Estelle provided was shockingly deficient in ways that are rarely seen. They filed a habeas book corpus petition on Prayer's behalf that had no citations to the record or evidence outside the record. The federal court denied the petition, finding that it disregarded applicable habeas law. Most disturbingly, Jefferson and Estelle completely missed the fact that Pryor's trial counsel had conducted a very subpar investigation into Pryor's background. Uh, the article goes on, but I'll, I'll wrap up at the end of it here. The Sixth Amendment is clear that the accused shall have the right to the assistance of counsel. At its most basic, that means a qualified lawyer with a law license, not one who has been prohibited from practice. The integrity of our system demands Pryor's claims receive a fair hearing before his execution can proceed. And of course, all this, these arguments that uh, former Governor Mark White made were ignored by the governor, by the Board of Pardons and Paroles, and by the uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, and the Supreme Court. But what it points out again is just how many people end up on death row because of not having the funds to get good legal help. And, you know, we, we, this is Tai Chin's case, and he's been executed. But we have uh, so many cases where this is the situation. And Juan Malveras, uh, Nancy's husband, is one of them. And I know this because I sat through part of the trial and saw what poor legal uh, defense he had by the attorneys that were court appointed and things came up and that they didn't look into. It was it was just really pathetic to watch him. Now on the positive side, looking at the overall picture, one good thing is that we have more influential politicians or former politicians, like former Governor Mark White and another governor, former Governor Bill Richardson from New Mexico, speaking out. And their voices are heard, although they didn't change this one situation. Uh, they, they are powerful voices. Um, Richardson now serves, uh, Governor Richard, former Governor Richardson of New Mexico now serves um, on the International Commission Against the Death Penalty. That's how far he's taken his opposition to the death penalty. So on the positive side, we have more and more voices, strong voices coming out against the death penalty. I think this is the trend. Um, unfortunately, we have people who are victims of this horrible system uh, that are, you know, they're, that are victims at this time before we get this 
death penalty totally abolished. And uh, I hope and pray that uh, that time will be coming because we don't need the death penalty to have a safe society. Um, all the money we waste on that death penalty, we should put into programs that are truly uh, helping society and preventing crime. Uh, the death penalty doesn't prevent crime in society. It just doesn't. Um, people like uh, Juan, you know, uh, innocent, and yet some, you know, people who get involved in gang activity, if we could just do more for them, you know, and, and the prevention of this and trying to help people with their lives, um, we would be so much better off in our society. So I hope more and more people will speak out against the death penalty, and, and I surely hope and pray that Juan Valdez is... Uh, Death sentence will be overturned and you'll be set free. Amen. Amen. David, we want to thank you for taking time out of your time up there. I don't know what you do up there exactly, but it, the chop it's... wood. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I don't really chop wood. Well, I do sometimes, but not very often. <laughs> okay. I just breathe the clean air pretty much. Well, that there's I something go out to be on said for that. Every now and then, we went out on a beautiful hike around a place called Long Lake the other day, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really good to get close to nature every now and then. It puts things in perspective. Well, thank you for coming on. As always, good report. Uh, you know, maybe one day somebody will catch on to the fact that we've got decades of information that proves that death penalty is not effective as a crime deterrent. Right. You sure do. Thanks, thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you for everything. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody at the show. Thanks, ENC, and everybody that's involved with a prison show. Doing a great job. Well, thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, before we go any further, I want to thank Jenny Salazar for a generous pledge to KPFT and dedicated it to the prison show of all shows. <laughs> Y'all want to get started? Go right ahead. All right. Hey, good morning. Or good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Good morning. We're happy to be here. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not just that. I told you. Um, you know, as you know, we, uh, the last couple of times we've been on Yeah, so really quickly, I want to go to a letter from, and we've gotten permission to say, it's from Jerry D. Okay. And so he was concerned about, you know, sex offenders and their ability to use social media and go online. So just wanted to let you know, Derry, Jerry, um, you know, Supreme Court decision, sex offenders can now use social media. All right. So slowly, slowly, um, those uh, conceptions or those restraints that we've placed around sex offenders are slowly starting to let themselves go. Así es. So básicamente los las, las personas que tienen los cargos de delincuente sexual ahora ya están cambiando los términos de, de esos tipos de casos que se manejan. So, entonces sí están permitiendo el acceso de internet, uh, usar socio, uh, social media, ¿verdad? Como eh, Facebook, eh, Twitter y esos medios, ¿verdad? So sí están cambiando las leyes poco a poquito, pero ahí lo llevamos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hang in there, Jerry. Things are slowly changing, so stay patient, stay positive, and thank you for writing in. Please continue to do so. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, next letter I got from Frankie. Uh, Frankie was really interested in the segment where we talked about language. Mm -hmm. Yes, Frank. Frankie, yeah. este, was it Garcia? Or, I'm sorry, what was his last name? Ah, uh, you know, I have that. I believe. Let y para todos los chicos que están escribiendo, le pedimos por favor, cuando ustedes escriben la carta, este, por favor, ponga si quiere que le que damos su nombre del aire o si no, verdad, o un apoyo o algo que para poder reconocer que hemos recibido su carta, porque sí le queremos dar gracias y sí queremos saber que sí lo hemos recibido, pero también no los queremos meter en problemas y respetar a cada quien, ¿verdad? Yeah, absolutely. We really want to respect your privacy. We don't want to cause you any more trouble. No. Um, so let us know how you want us to refer to you, and it is uh, Frankie Garza. Frankie Garza. Yeah. Muchísimas gracias por su, por su carta. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he does agree that language is an issue, especially since all the forms are in English, as we had right. uh, pointed out. And Frankie made a really good uh, point in his letter in saying that, you know, if you have an assistant request that you want to keep private, it's really hard to do that if you it haven't is. mastered the English language because you have to ask for assistance from other inmates. Right. So, ahorita es lo que estamos eh, 
conversando, ¿verdad? El tema de cuando uno necesita hacer un I-60 o poner un, una forma para pedir ayuda, ese formulario no viene en español o tal vez tienes que pedir ayuda. So, entonces, nada de lo que vas a poner va a ser privado porque tú tienes que pedir ayuda para que te lo puedan escribir. Y pues así no se vale. Uno tiene que, con su puño de letra, poner lo que necesitas. So, es importante poder tener ese, esos, esos formularios en español para poder expresarte como uno quiere, ¿verdad? So, si lo estamos tomando en cuenta, vamos a ver qué es lo que podemos hacer eh, para poder a, a ayudar, porque pues es correcto que hay las formas en los dos lenguajes. Yeah. Claro que sí. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, uh, I want to make really clear, you know, to anybody who writes, in, if you're writing to anyone, make sure you write clearly and make sure you give everybody the information they need. But most importantly, we, we need to know who you are. We cannot help you if you remain anonymous to us. So make sure that we can read your writing and that you give us the information we need so that we can identify you and, and know who exactly needs help. Sí, so por favor, si van a escribir, este, por favor, que la letra esté clarita, no tiene que ser tan largo, este, brevemente lo que, lo que estás pidiendo, lo que necesitas la ayuda en. Entonces, este, si necesitas poner un nombre o cómo, te, o cómo los podemos contactar o dirigir con usted, por favor, ponga su información también. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've had a packed show, a lot of information tonight. So do you want to do that wrap up with us? Um, sure. So, entonces, básicamente, ahorita estamos, este, la esposa de Juan, eh, Yancy, ¿verdad? Yancy está aquí, este, con el Discovery Channel, que me da mucho gusto que Luz está en, en este, en este, en este, en este caso, perdón, porque es muy importante. So, básicamente, Juan, ahorita está en Death Row, entonces, ellos están tratando de, de overturn, ¿verdad? Su... Su, su caso. So, entonces ahorita es lo que está haciendo ella. Ella está agarrando toda la ayuda, que el apoyo que ella puede agarrar y es muy importante. So, a mí me da mucho gusto, como yo, todos saben, yo tengo un hermano que está más o menos en la misma situación. So, a mí me da mucho gusto que estás haciendo esto. También tuvimos a la señora Terry McClark que estaba eh, hablando en el show el día de hoy en respeto de lo, que ella, de lo que ella hace y cómo ella te puede ayudar. Sí dejó su dirección, su dirección de ella es 727 de la East, de la 26 Street. Eso queda en Austin, Texas, y el código postal es 78705. So, si usted tiene algo que necesita ayuda, eh, por favor, diríjase con ella. Ella es la señora Terry McClark. Eh, de nuevo, su dirección es 727 East, de la 26 Street. Eso queda en Austin, Texas, 78705. Okay, great. So, uh, again, we want you to write us. Please keep uh, writing us and letting us know what do you need help with, what is concerning you, what do we need to know about here on the outside so that we can help you on the inside. That is the reason we're here. It is of the utmost importance to us. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, that uh, address to you. It's 419 Love at Boulevard, Houston, Texas, and Hank, help me out here. Is it zip code 77006? You've got it. I've got it. Okay. Right. So, la dirección donde usted puede escribir, si no la ha anotado, eh, de nuevo, es el 419. Love it. L-O-V de Victor, E-T-T. -T. Esto queda en Houston, Texas, y el código postal es eh, 77006. All right, thanks for having us tonight. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Y de nuevo le damos gracias por todas las cartas que hemos recibido. Y muchos saludos a mi hermano Gino Bebo Salinas, que, hey, está, Gino. En el, que está en el Uñone, ¿ok? <laughs> All right, guys, stay positive out there. Gracias. All right. Well, that would have been Daniel's report, but since Daniel's in Italy right now and won't be back till towards the end of August, uh, oh, yeah. we're just going to have to live without him for a little while, aren't we? Somehow we'll manage. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for coming in and doing the report. Uh, let me see. Where are we now? NBA should be coming back in. And, yeah, here he comes now. Uh, while everybody's switching around and stuff, I want to let you know this is KPFT Houston. We live by your donations, which is why I wanted to thank uh, her on the air for making a donation. We give – everybody here gives some money yes. to this place. You know, we, we don't get paid. We bring our money here, we bring our volunteer time here, et cetera, et cetera. And it's been going on, uh, well, the previous show's been on since 1980. The station's been on since 1970. It's the only station in America ever bombed off the air. Twice. Only one ever bombed off at all. I didn't know that. But we got bombed off twice. Yeah, we got back on the air in a few months and uh, the Klan did it again. They couldn't stand hippies with free speech, people of color with free speech, and a radio station to do it on? No way. Yeah. Boom! Blew that stuff up. 
Sorry. And when we got back on, boom, <laughs> they did it again. Yeah. So uh, I just want to thank everybody that's ever donated to KPFT. We wouldn't be here without you. Uh, we would be doing something. I don't know what. I'd, I'd probably be out drinking in a bar or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm just blessed to have this opportunity to uh, be in with good people like you that uh, are really our troops out in the street working on this stuff. Right. And I thank you on behalf of every guy that's locked up everywhere, particularly those guys on death row now. Right, because I know she is here because of her husband, but because of her and because of Juan, that's going to make a tremendous difference for everybody, not just for yeah, one person. Right, right. Every time you get a victory, it moves everybody else that much one it step does. closer. Yes, it does. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, I got NBA. Yes. Supposed to be NBA. Uh, uh, he's on his way. Okay. He's on his way. All right. He's on his way. Meanwhile, uh, I'll say again. Uh, why don't we run a card? Get his drumsticks. Okay, we're going to get the brakes on. We're going back to them. This is KPFT Houston. You're listening to The Prison Show. Uh, you had an action-packed show, and we've got a, a gentleman, MBA, is back in the house. Yes. All right, you prepared to do a break song for us? Yeah, I had a song over there, you know, Bronco, I helped him. Uh, I have a song called uh, Adios, it means bye, you know, I wrote a song for my little, I have a little brother that uh, he died for cancer, you know, so mm -hmm. I wrote the song for him. And I have a, my uncle, you know, he spent 20 years in prison. So when, when he got out, he was already crazy. Mm -hmm. And then he died too. So I wrote the song for, for both of them, you know. How long is it? Take a check. Just play it by ear. Just be ready. You tell Hank to be ready. Stay ready, Hank. There's no timer. You're on Facebook. No timer. Quien me dijo que la libertad es lo más caro en este mundo, sobrino, no tiene precio. Y recuerda que la lealtad es el valor que el mundo no tiene precio. Habla de corazón, los juras no podrán contigo. Tu corazón, hijo mío, es tu mejor amigo. Si no prometes, nunca debes, es mi secreto. En el camino recto siempre encontrará respeto. Que no te cambie la misión, no seas como el resto. Amate primero y después te amará. Un hombre libre no prohíbe sonreír a otros Y son los esclavos, los esclavizan a otros Mantén tu mente transparente, aleja la ignorancia Nieto de libertad, hijo de la libertad
la democracia, la vida consiste en amar y tener paciencia. Amar consiste en perdonar, es la referencia. se llama éxito amor al prójimo lo llamo éxito vivir sin rencor te lleva al éxito si aprecias lo que tienes tienes éxito mira mi medicina es el amor es lo que tomo cada día cuando me encuentro en dolor escucha si tu vida pierde sabor te aseguro si sonríes que recupera color mira si soy feliz soy rico homie la riqueza no es dinero me lo dijo Bobby no permitas que nadie decida por ti La verdad, todos aprendemos a vivir Y diles que soy pobre de nacimiento Rico en conocimiento, una flor en el cemento Macabelli, gracias por todo el conocimiento El que dice lo que piensa nunca pierde a He's got something. One more thing to add here, I believe. Yeah, well, I, I wrote this. Um, it looks like I said at the beginning, but I'm going to say it again so Juan can listen to it, you know. Uh, Juan, como estas, hermano? Me llamo MBA. Conocí a tu esposa en, el, en la universidad. Escribí una canción, pero uh, desafortunadamente aún no hemos podido grabar la canción. Pero la vamos a grabar. Y una vez que la grabamos, tu mujer será la primera persona que la tenga. Y si ella quiere, puede venir al estudio a, a vernos grabar. Pero escribí un, un trozo aquí sentado pensando en su situación que decía que yo no tengo miedo a morir. Me mata la rabia de morir por algo que no hice, pero me lo culpan a mí. Los que derramaron la sangre corriendo libres y felices, mientras que yo suplico misericordia a unos jueces. Aunque la esperanza de vivir nunca se pierde, Digo vivir porque nadie vive si no es libre. Solo puedo ser responsable de mis acciones. Solo quiero pagar por mis acciones. Nunca cumplí los 20 porque vivo encadenado desde los 19. ¿Por qué la justicia no me responde si estoy en vuestras manos y no queréis escucharme? Me habéis quitado el derecho de ser padre. Primordiáis condenarme en vez de defenderme. ¿Qué clase de justicia? Por favor, explicarme. Eso es para ti, Juan. NBA, gracias. Okay. All right, let's, let me go to Mexico City, Guadalupe. Es un saludo para mi hijo, John Henry. Hola, mi hijo. Yo te mando muchos saludos, muchos abrazos, hijo. Y deseando que te encuentres bien, hijo.
momentos que iba a platicar con mis niños, pasaron de años en dos años, me fui de paso a cuarto, y en dos, no, perdón, uno pasó al quinto y el otro al cuarto. Están bien felices, y para ella también ya está feliz, y dice que va a ir a ver a ti acá, a ver a ti acá, este, te queremos mucho, este, cuídate, este, pero, este, para ella, se me atravesó todo me dijo, sí, mi hijo, así que mi hijo, recuerde que lo queremos tanto a mi niño, tanto, que me dijo, que siempre que tengo mi mente, mi hijo, estaba pensando que me quisiera ir a, a Cancún a pasear, a la playa, y que me llevo a mi hijo, siempre mi corazón me lo llevaré, y estaba acordando de ti, y que me llevo a mi hijo también para allá, para la playa, donde quiera que ando, mi hijo, te tengo mi mente, estoy en el trabajo, estoy pensando en ti, mi hijo. Siempre está teniendo en mi corazón, mi hijo. Yo sé que no has tenido tiempo hijo, para escribirme, pero no se preocupe, mi hijo, que yo sé que está bien y que tiene muchas personas que contestarle, pero espero también una carta de usted, mi hijo. Dios me lo bendiga y me lo cuide siempre a mí. Y muchas gracias a este programa por este, tener este programa, porque es la única modo de que tenemos comunicación con ustedes, porque sabemos que nos están escuchando, hijo, tanto a mí como a las demás madres. Okay. Uh, okay, well, Yancy's got a, uh, Yancy's got a shout out today. Hola, buenas noches. Ha sido un día bendecido, una semana muy larga, pero muy bendecida, gracias a Dios. Um, okay. Quiero que me tengas a cada momento presente. Siempre estás, tú sabes, en mi corazón, en mi pensamiento. Te extraño muchísimo. Tú sabes que siempre estoy aquí ansiosamente esperando la próxima visita. You know, um, I'm, um, I just, te amo y quiero en todos momentos um, tomar la oportunidad que pueda, tú sabes, uh, decirte te amo, te amo, te amo, papito, y Estás siempre presente en espíritu, en amor. Uh, siempre estamos juntos. Ya estoy ansiosamente esperando la próxima visita, uh, que se me hacen largos los días. Pero, um, looking forward to it. Y mañana, tú sabes, tendremos el evento que sé que será de bendición. También en la mañana estaré hablando con unos jóvenes, teenagers en que están en libertad condicional, a punto de regresar de, a, a, la, a la cárcel y los estaré aconsejando. Um, tú sabes del evento que hago todos los años. Ahí um, estaré, estarán uh, los chicos de Discovery. Y uh, yo sé que vienen días de, de bendición, um, de victoria, en el nombre de Jesús. Um, te amo, mi amor. Uh, pasas buenas noches, dulces sueños, sueña con Diosito, los angelitos y conmigo también. Y te amo. Good night. Good night, papi. Her heart's in it. <laughs> All right, let's go with Hank from Wisconsin. Hank, how you doing? Hey. Oh, Rudy says hi, y'all. Yeah, I hear <laughs> <laughs> you heard me say, hey, I'm out here in the shop. I want to help myself a motorcycle. Uh, I could hear you across the shop. I said, hey, and she just went to park. My loyal companion and faithful friend, Trudy Lynn. Well, there you How y'all doing this week? It's like a million dollars every day. Well, I made it through another week. I got off work and come home and cut the grass and, and uh, raked it all up and and been working uh, ever since I got off. Uh, drank me some coffee, got coffeeed up. I'm good to go. Out here turning wrenches on motorcycles now. 
There you go. I just wanted to call and tell all my old buddies, you know, that I ain't forgot about them and, and everything's good in the hood. Seen John Fogarty a couple of years ago and run up and down the uh, run up and down the Mississippi River bottom and no John, he's still belted out. He's he's looking pretty spry on stage. He was jumping around and and dancing around and plays guitar. Had had his son there and his son plays a mean guitar too. So everything's good in the hood. I just wanted to tell everybody hey and let them know I was thinking about them. And I appreciate everything y'all do down there at the station. Fellas, it'd be awful, awful good if y'all were all out mowing your own yards. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't really complain, but it's kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All, all right. right. We'll talk to you. have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, Janie, you're on the Hello. air. Um, hi. Um, I just want to tell him that I'm doing good. Um, I'm working right now um, and so forth, but I'm hanging in there. I'm, I know they're still monitoring the mail because I haven't got anything since last Saturday, and the last letter I got was the 19th, so I'm what? sure I'll probably get some mail tomorrow. It is frustrating, <laughs> but... You want to make we'll get through it. You have a couple of more months and you'll be home. So, um, I don't know if you're getting my mail or not, but I am writing every day and, and all that. But I'm, I'm doing good. Um, all, all the kids are ready to go back to school. Done bought all their clothes, school supplies, everything, so they're all ready to go. Um, stay out of trouble and, and be careful. And I love you and I miss you. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Have a great weekend. Uh -huh, bye. Okay, hold on. Gina, it's Jessica. I just want to say hi, and I want to say hello to everybody at the wing unit. And I do want to let you know that I have received your letters, and we are working on everything. We're waiting for your medical release from the Consulado Mexicano to get to the Consulado Mexicano so we can start working on your case. No pierde las esperanzas and keep your head up. God willing, Mom and Erika and the kids will go see you as soon as we're able to get a visit. So just be careful and keep your head up and don't let the negative stuff get to you. Everything is going to be all right. Just got to give it time and we're doing everything we can to and that we're supposed to do. I did get the letter um, about the other guy that was assaulted in the same unit as well. So I'm going to reach out to his wife and talk to her. Okay. But everything's okay. Together. Got it. Um, okay. I had Thank somebody you. write me here to the prison show that was talking about the conditions of the wind unit. So it's funny how everything's just falling into place. Just be patient, and I'm sure something is okay. gonna, gonna, something good is going to come out of all this bad. Yes. All right, you have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. We love you. Oh, I'm just fine. It's 281. Let's go back to the calls with Julie from Florida. 450. Yeah, hi. Thanks. Oh, 281. Uh, happy weekend, everybody. Hey, so man, this is your OG. How are you? 1789. Uh, I got a message from Mary Beth. Okay. Her love hug. Okay. Thank She's you. out having a good time with her girl this evening, so I think it's awesome they get to spend so much time together. Um, let's see, so you've had a couple of fabulous weeks, some good visits last week. Hopefully you got your visits today, got to see your nephew again, and I'm not sure if you saw him today or not. I missed a call from him, but he ended up uh, connecting with Jeff. Jeff said they talked for a while, but I'll talk with Jeff tomorrow. He's down visiting his youngest with his dad. So I've just been kind of hanging out doing my own thing today. It's been a treat. So I hope you are doing everything possible to stay as cool as possible there and noticing the temps and not very friendly. So hopefully you're taking it easy and staying cool. Um, talk with Shelly. Let's see. What else do I know? Oh, yeah. Today is your kid's birthday. Jeez. You're old. Huh. Anyway, um, I love you. I'm feeling great. Jeff's hopefully on the moon with that stupid foot of his. Um, that's all. I love you. I hope you're well. And I'll um, talk with you soon. All right. Send you some love this week again. And, oh, yeah, I hope you ended up getting number four. I don't know. I haven't really got an answer. I'm going to keep trying to get an answer. But no, uh, no communicado there. So, anyways, maybe it's shown up by now. All right. I love you. Sweet dreams. Take care. And uh, your other wildflowers waiting for you. All right. Talk with you soon. 
Bella from North Carolina calling from the Polanski unit. How you doing, Bella? I'm doing fine. How are you? Like a million dollars every day. <laughs> That's good. Hey, Jedediah. Hey, baby, I love you. And even though we were blessed enough to have a visit today, I still miss you tonight. Just really, really miss you. But I will see you on Tuesday, so I have something to look forward to. I talked to Shawnee's husband, and it's just really sad. They had to sedate her um, earlier today. And they decided to leave her sedated until morning. So there won't be a service tomorrow, and he really isn't sure about Sunday yet. So she's just having a really difficult time. So I'm keeping her in my prayers. And I want you to know that Melanie and I had a nice lunch today after our visit. We went to the Italian restaurant here in town because I remember Jedediah that they have a gluten-free pasta. So I went there and had that, and now they have gluten-free pizza. So... I may get one of those for lunch tomorrow. And also, uh, Moy, if you're listening, Melanie made it safe to your mother's house, and she asked me to tell you she loves you and she misses you and you're her salvation. And if Moy isn't listening, will someone please at least tell him his wife made it safe to his mother's house so he won't be worried about her all weekend. And at the moment, Jedediah, I'm craving a Hershey bar, but I'm too lazy to go out this late and get it, so I'll just make sure I stock up on them tomorrow. And also, our little one sent photos of her horse trailer to me, and I just uploaded them to Walgreens, and I'll pick them up tomorrow and put them in the mail to you. So, baby, you take care and stay safe for me, and I'll see you on Tuesday. I love you, Jedediah. Night, night, and sweet dreams. Thank you, Hank. You're welcome. Have a great Bye-bye. weekend. You too, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Judy from Florida calling for the Polensky unit. Good evening, everybody. I am calling to wish Rodney Reed a happy date night. And I can't remember if I told you this week or not, but all of your messages were passed along from your card on Monday. Sure. Hope you're doing well and are managing to stay cool as possible through the summer heat. I'm going to do my best to get pictures done this weekend. And get them to the to you in the mail on Monday. I'll let you know for sure Monday in the JPay um, if that happened. Kaylee and I went out to dinner tonight. It was really nice. Um, can't wait to take you there. Hello. Hello. Are you still there? Well, I guess we dropped it. All right. Uh, Lord, I hope it's not this board going again. Uh, let me, oh, hey, Nancy, how are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you? Like a million dollars, I know. Every day, <laughs> every day. I, life is grand. I can't complain about anything. That's good. <laughs> That's real good. Well, uh, thank you for letting me give this shout out to my son, Daniel. <clears throat> And hello, Daniel. This is Mama, and I love you with all my heart, and I always enjoy getting to say hello. And uh, all of this past week, Sherry has been so very sick with the summer flu and congestion, and I wanted to come see her earlier in the week to be with her. And she refused to let me. She said that she did not want me to contact what she had. But I talked to her today, and she's doing better. So she says that she would love for me to come see her tomorrow. (laughs) So uh, that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going up there real early in the morning and come back and be home before dark tomorrow night. And uh, so, so all that is good. And uh, we've got, I've got some new neighbors over on the south side now. They, I don't know exactly who they are yet. There's been so many people, you know, coming and going over there helping them move. But anyway, they're in the house now that, you know, there wasn't anybody in there for a couple of three weeks. And um, Doby is doing fine. He's over here behind the kitchen table, and I have enjoyed all day long taking breaks in between so I can keep it up, but I have done some good 
spring house cleaning on it's not spring. Anyway, I've enjoyed it. And uh, I was trying to think of, oh, I've been seeing the hummingbirds again, Daniel. I thought, you know, I didn't know where they had gone, but I've been seeing them again. So that's good. And uh, I guess I'll let you go. And I love you with all my heart. And I'll just say good night for now. And uh, I'll... Uh, Talk to you next time, and thank y'all, everybody on on KPFT, and have a good weekend. Do not. Yes, ma'am. You too, Miss Nancy. You know you're one of our favorite callers. I gotta she tell is. you, she is my everybody up here just <laughs> loves it when you call in. So thank yeah, you. I'm 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 glad. I mean, I'm glad to hear you say that. That just makes my day, and I know you really mean it. Well, we sure do. Uh, the girls are sitting here saying the same thing. <laughs> we love to. Oh, we love when you call. Well, and, and I want to say that each and every one that listens, you know, to uh, the, the 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 girls and the guys and whoever hears me, I I, I care about each and every one of them because you know, um, that's that's just how it's supposed to be, and and I. You know, I, I care about you. Well, we and thank you so much. Yeah, we do. We thank you so much for those kind words. Have a great weekend. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. And, and good night. And Daniel, I love you with all my heart. And goodbye. Right now. All Bye-bye. right. Good night. Bye-bye. Lydia from McAllen calling for the Polensky unit. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Um, hello, Bocasito. Trying to let you know that I sent a JPEG. Um, plus, I sent some pictures via snail mail. Some of those in New York, and then some of the pictures that Erin has taken last okay. Friday. Um, so you should get those this week. Uh, I'll send off the stuff uh, to Jamila on Monday. Okay, I should get that out on yeah. Monday, okay? Yeah, and Tia Patty got the truck out on Wednesday. So it's here at the, the ranch. And um, it's been very, very hot here in the valley and humid. Uh, there was rain lingering around, but it's mostly toward West Buckle and Harlingen. And we did get rained on a little bit, like from the Pujos to Palpurios on the way back, but not much rain, really not here. It's just hot. And uh, tomorrow, God willing, we have plans to go out to Glasscock and Clean the trees out of the house on glass and clean up. So that's the plans for tomorrow morning, God willing. Uh, uh, maybe we'll head off to the beach if it's a nice day. Sure. Love you, Poppy. You take care of yourself, and I hope you will be going to see the doctor soon, okay? I'm doing fine. I just have a little bit of pain. Hmm. Just it's age already. But I'm taking some cranberry juice and lots of water. So that should clear me up. Okay? Did you uh, talk to that Natalie? Big Lou, Jeff, Rudy, yeah. Juan, oh, I emailed Natalie. Joey, Rod, I emailed and Natalie. Um, you all know who you are, okay? Mm-hmm. Know that we think about you, okay? Good night. I love you, Papacito. Good night. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great weekend now. Mm-hmm. You too. Bye. Natalie from France, we're so glad to have you on. Hi, good evening, uh, KTFT. Um, uh, hello, Robert. I think uh, you are listening to me. I hope you are very well. I hear from okay, you mean? by Kelly and uh, Rob. Uh, I also have your new address and your number signed okay. yesterday. I have communicated my address and my phone to her, but okay, I don't not understand why you have not yet in your possession. Robert Lovely writes me often this last week. So we send a message. I'm glad to hear about her, about uh, Lovely. She asks me <coughs> all the time after you. This morning, she sent me an email. She thinks of you, and she is really sorry for Big Tie. It's really sad. I think of 
Taishin. I received a letter from Taishin where he spoke a lot of you and will send you a copy of this letter. He asked me a favor also before leaving, he told me. I will tell you. Robert, for me, all is well except a few problems with the house here and the house uh, in Paris. I will explain to you later. I know that you received my letter of GP on the 17th of uh, July. But for now, you have to know that it's impossible to use GPay with your new number. Maybe next week. I will check during the weekend. I was going to forget to tell you about Sasha. I think you understand. I miss him very much. I think, I think of him and I hope to see him soon. I don't know. Uh, Robert Thierry also contacted me. Uh, that's all. Uh, I wish you a good night and a good weekend to you. And uh, of course, uh, to Paul's letter. And uh, take care of you, Robert. And good night. Thank you, KPFT. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. calling. Merci. Bye. Bye-bye. Leslie from England calling for the Polinsky Unit. To the International Hi. Prison Show. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I'm calling for John Ramirez on Polunsky. Hi, John. Um, I hope that you're well. Um, I got your letter a few weeks ago, actually. It was just before we went on holiday. Um, and okay. we went down into the caravan for three weeks, uh, yes. for a week um, in Glastonbury, like we do every year. So we've been down there with the dogs. Um, I sent you three postcards Where from Glastonbury, from? so hopefully you'll have got those now. Um, I was going to write your letter straight okay. back, but um, a few things have happened, which I'll let you know about when I write back. Okay, um, and I'll be replying this week, so um, yeah, I'm a little late with that, but um, I'll, I'll send something out this week for you. Um, also, when I got home um, from our holiday, um, your collage had arrived. And picture so thank you for those that's brilliant it was really really nice to get and I received it just after my birthday so um, yeah that was a really nice surprise thank you and thanks to Karen for sending that to me um, Mike and me and the dogs are all well um, my parents have moved out yay <laughs> they have their own house now um, so we went to see them last night they've got lots of work to do but they're just cracking on with it um, old Bob has had a fall and he's broken his hip um, so he's been in hospital while we're away um, but he's just got back now so we got back last night we had to put a bed downstairs in his house because he cannot get up the stairs um, and Andy of Annie and Andy he went to Romania to do a, a motorcycle race and he's had a fall unfortunately and he's broken his neck so he's flying home from Romania today. He's coming home in an air ambulance, and they'll be um, he'll be having surgery either today or Sunday. So Annie and Poppy are booked on a flight on Sunday, and they don't know whether or not they can fit them in the air ambulance. So they might all be back today, or um, Annie and Poppy might be back on Sunday. So I'll let you know how that goes anyway. Um, it's a bit of a worry. You should be all right, though. Um, fingers crossed. Um, I'm back to work on Sunday, and it's payday Monday, so I'll sort out some books for you. Okay, so lots of love to you. Take care. Um, and, yeah, when I, when I drop you out from um, the letter and the books, I'll send you a JPEG to let you know. Okay, love you loads. Take care. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're welcome. Good night. Okay, Bob's got a shout-out to do. Or, hey. or a few. Or... Mike, you got me up, Mike? This is Bob Gartner. Hi. Uh, I wanted to say a couple things about the wind unit. Uh, there's been a concern about the radio reception there with me, and it's something I'm working on. Um, if any of you have issues concerning radio reception and you want to write to me here at the station, please do so. 419 Lovett, L O V E T T. 
Houston, Texas 77006. Just put that to the prison show with my name, Bob Gartner, on it. And uh, with that, I would like to say hello to Marcia Hall there at the win, Kim Basro, uh, Wesley McCullough, Billy Sims, and uh, of course, Doc. I hope all of you guys know Doc, and maybe you can get some alternative medicine there, a little practice. I don't know. But uh, if you guys can receive me, hello to you. Where are you calling from? Hello to Jorge Garcia at the East Ham and any of you ladies out there that are looking for a pen pal, I would uh, warmly recommend Jorge. He's been uh, okay. patiently waiting uh, for a, a lady that would be willing to write to him for some time. And again, just write to me and let me know. I can let you know. So I guess that's it. John Green, hello there at Trail. And uh, hello to you other guys that you know I write to you occasionally. Thank you, Hank. Thanks, Bob. Okay, let me, uh, oh, well, we've got Karen here. Karen, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thank you. All right. I'd like to send a shout out to my husband at the Win Unit, Colton. I love you, my love. I can't wait for Sunday to get here so I can see you. And also to John Ramirez at Polanski. Hi, John. I got your letter today with the three pictures. I will write back to you on Monday. I also would like to send shout outs to Juan Castillo, Romero Gonzalez, Joseph Garcia, Johnny Ray, Juan Valerez, Talon Carter, Carrie Allen. Also, to the craft shop guys at Polunsky, Vincent Baker, Wendy Ann Sanders, Jesse Hill, and Hunt. You guys have a good night. And now I'm thinking of y'all and praying for y'all daily. All right. Now, where was I with this call situation here? Uh, oh, I know exactly where I was for Philip from Dallas. Hello, Hank. How are you? Like a million dollars every dang day, I can tell you. <laughs> I just love it when you say that. It makes me smile. It's been so hot, as I told Di, um, they stay. No, I don't know. That the devil was spotted out on 635 trying to hitchhike out of here. <laughs> so, this is for Dan the Man. I love you. I got your letter and your sweet card. It made my week. I am trying to get this lump on my dang forehead to go down. Um, I've been alternating ice packs. It's hard to keep one frozen. It's been that hot. So, anyway... Just know that I'm thinking of you. I'm lifting you up. I have tried three times this week to get in touch with that young man. He they say he is on vacation, but will be back next week. And, of course, I will be on it. I love you. I want you. I need you. Know that I'm thinking of you. I'm lifting you up in prayer. And you have a great weekend. Try to stay hydrated and cool as possible. Thank you, Hank. Thank you all so much. Have a great weekend. You too. <coughs> Bye, right. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Ruby from Houston calling for the Polinsky unit. How you doing, Ruby? I'm doing good at work. How are y'all? Like a million dollars every day. Yes, sir. Um, this is the Hey, babe, um, I just got your letter. It was like two weeks late. I'm going to get you holding your mail again. Anyway, sure, we'll uh, I got to go ahead and do the East Palm, but I said you can't receive none. But just for the, uh, the money, so I have no idea. Um, Mimi said that she doesn't get to the view and that she doesn't get home school. Mom told her that um, one of my, well, my uncle passed okay. away a couple days ago. Um, I'm dying. Yeah, that was crazy. But um, everybody's doing good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and develop some more pictures when I get paid on the second. I'll be sending you some. And um, that's about it. Um, not really. Just a lot of drama at my house. My mom's house, and I'll write to explain it. I'm just getting off a, we're getting over a cold. But I'm just going to say I love you, miss you, and I'll be writing you tonight. So have a good night. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Gary from the Woodlands calling for the Polanski unit. Hey, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I was calling the, the shout out to Robert's father. Hi, honey. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, I got your letter, and I will be visiting in about two weeks. I would like to get there sooner, but I'm having car trouble right now, so um, 
Can't wait to see you, though. One, one more thing, uh, and I was going to tell you when I want to follow you, but I, you need to know now. So I let the people make fun of you back there in the road, okay? I, I know that you don't want to push anyone's buttons and everything, but you need to stand up for yourself, okay? All right, I love you. I will see you in two weeks, okay? Bye-bye. All right, have a great weekend. Now, Mysterious Mike's ready to do his shout-out, which will bring us to 26 of them so far this show. Well, hello, everybody. This is Mysterious Mike Lewis from the Historic Prison Show. I'd like to do a special shout-out to a guy I started out on radio with years ago. He contacted me, J.D. Houston in Acola, Florida. He actually came up with the name Mysterious Mike for me. So I'm doing a special shout out to him, and uh, we used to joke. Mystery like, deepens too. So. Yeah, we used to call him uh, <laughs> DJ Notsuo, and, and getting back with Mysterious Mike. Okay, I'm gonna do some shout outs here. Yovan Spring Branch, the guys of Texas, Guy Alexander, Jamie Cuppet, Dennis Hope, Stephen Russell, Philip from Dallas, K Money in Houston. Philip Perez here in Houston. Carl Riviera wants me to do shout out to Alex Molina. Tasha wants me to do shout out to Rito Strada on payday. Michael Marino, Manuel Marino, Michelle Bateman, Doc, DJ Matt, Oz, Thomas, Frank Klepper, Jivin Jimmy, Haas, Bonton, Mickey. I'd like to do some shout outs to uh, Bill R. Sims. Uh, let's see, F. Bernard, uh, Howard S. Pruitt, Jose Herrera. Michael S. Garcia, Adam Wilkerson. I'd like to do some shout outs to Robert Satillo, uh, George R. Barr, uh, Christopher Dye, uh, Thomas Ramirez, Robert uh, L. Uh, Allen, Bill R. Sims in San Angelo. Uh, no, actually, at the Wynn Unit. Sorry about that. Uh, Mark Holloway. John R. Green, Wayman Spriggs, and Edward Darrell Harmon. Also like to do some shout outs to Anthony Neeland in Austin. Congratulations on getting out. Blade Parker in Houston and Clarence Lee Bowman. Uh, also congratulations on getting out in San Angelo. You can continue to write me 419 Lovett Boulevard, Houston, Texas 77006 to a historic prison show at the Mighty 90 KPFT. And still keep those pledges coming in because we're going to need every dollar. Yes. Now back to Hank and the uh, prison show gang. Yeah, Mike's right about that. You can call any time of week at 713-526-4000. Tony answers the phone or one of the interns uh, all week long. And if you don't get through to somebody right away, just wait a little while and call again. You'll get somebody. But we need you like never before. Okay, so we're going to go back to the calls here, and I've got one more really uh, long waiting with Donna from New Jersey. How are you doing? I'm good, Hank. Sorry for the I'm... wait. Oh, no, no. It's no problem at all. Um, whatever time is the right time. <laughs> um, hey, Salon, it's me. Um, I got your letter yesterday, which was a surprise because I didn't expect to get one so soon, so that was very nice, and I sent you a couple of JPs, and hopefully you got those also. Um, everything is good on my end. I'm looking forward to coming out there, and I have a whole lot to say, but I really can't say it right now because, you know, I talk too much. So um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm thinking of you, and um, I hope that you are processing everything in a positive space and, and taking in the totality of the real reality of things, which is in a place that no one else can see or touch. And um, and uh, everybody out there, all the guys, you know, who are affected by the decisions of mad people, um, you know, there's always a balance to everything. So for, for uh, all the negatives, there has to be positive. So just try and keep the positive balance and keep things in perspective. And... That's all I have to say for tonight, and I love you, and I will see you soon. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a great weekend. You too, honey. Okay, now, well, let me get around to uh, catching up here. Okay. May from Florida, calling for the Polinsky unit. Thank you so much. Buenas noches para todos. ¿Cómo están? 
Hola amigo, gracias que recibí tus dos cartas. Fue como que escucharon mis últimos mensajes el viernes pasado. Me dio mucho gusto escuchar de ti. Y aquí, súper contenta, tan contenta que hoy voy a decir un trabalengua. Ahí vi una gallina pinta, piripinta, gorda, perigorda, piripintiva y sorda. Que tenía tres pollitos, pintos, piripintos, gordos, piripintos, piripintivos y sordos. Si la gallina no hubiera sido pinta, piripinta, gorda, perigorda, piripintiva y sorda, los pollitos no hubiesen sido pinto, piripipinto, gordo, piripinto, piripintivo y sordos. Ah, ya, eh, no se me trabó la lengua. Así que si te acuerdas, lo puedes intentar de nuevo. Eh, espero que tengas una semana bendecida, con muchas sonrisas y fuerzas para seguir adelante. Como siempre, pensando en ti, enviando esas oraciones al cielo para que bajen con muchas bendiciones para todos ustedes y no se den por vencidos. Sigan adelante y no olviden que tienen un Padre que les ama y el amor de Cristo que los cubre, los cuida y los protege. Así que descansen. Buenas noches. Hasta luego. Chao. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. Cash from San Angelo calling for the Polinsky unit. What's up, babe? Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm saying trying what? to stay keep a low profile. Yeah. Thought I'd call you and Mysterious Mike and Reed and see how y'all doing. How's that blood sugar? Man, I'm keeping it down control, but I'm more worried about this bone council right now. Oh, wow. Well, um, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot all about that, man. But the good Lord gonna make a way. Amen. So We're with you on that. I'm doing about as best as can be expected. I just got through with the lawyers today trying to get this disability started because they don't want to give it to me. But that's... that's That's our government, though. That's our boy Trump. Yeah, but you're an automatic qualifier, so they got to give it to you at some point. Oh, yeah. We uh, they going to get all my TDC records and stuff because TDC had me classified as just built. So they're going to uh, mm-hmm. use that and go in there with everything else. Plus, my doctors, they, they wrote letters and stuff today. You're going to let yeah. the government fight the government. Let them do it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. I just stand back and watch. Well, let me holler at my boys over there on Polanski. Hello? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You're on. You're on. Oh, Clarence Brown. Johnny San Antonio Barnes. Oh, Corey. Oh, Polo. All you mother and brothers, I'm thinking about y'all, man. Hope y'all doing well, man. The heat ain't too bad. No, I'm forgetting none of y'all, man. I'm out here taking it one day at a time. Pray each day that I do. That's all I can do, man. Hope your brother's doing well. I try to stay in contact with you every Friday. And I write when I can. Because, you know, writing is not one of my sports. But I'm going to try to do the best I can. And tell all the rest of us. And tell old King over there on three building. I ain't forgot him. Y'all, y'all be cool, bro. Y'all take care of each other, man. Well, Hank. Hey. Well, it's another week. Listen, man, I, you're in our prayers. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm going to take it one day at a time like I've been doing. And do the best I can. You know, that's the way it works anyway. I, I tried to get two days at a time once, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, we're going to go one day at a time. One day at a time, exactly. Step by step. All right. Well, God bless you, man. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. We'll talk to you next time. All right. All right, good night. Good night. Diane from Houston, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Like a million dollars every day. I get I get to say that a lot. <laughs> Catchy. Uh-huh. Well, that's good. Good to hear everybody's voice. Um, yes. uh, my name is Diana, and I'm calling for the Polanski unit. And send me a shout out to my son, Johnny. You know, uh, it's really, really good to hear your voice today. I'm so glad we got to talk. I'm glad that I got to get, to get in tonight. I called in the rebound button, uh, I don't know, maybe about 35 times, but I got in. Hey. So I'm so excited. Um, I just want to tell you that I love you so much, and I um, hope you get the card with the pictures. Hopefully you'll get it by Tuesday. And um, I will see you not this weekend, baby, but next weekend, okay? And I hope to talk to you tomorrow. I'll be at my gray sheet meeting uh, from 8.30 to about 10.30 or 11. 
Um, but just call me whenever you get a chance. I'll be up in about 8.30 or early tomorrow. So just know I love you. I love you very much. And I can't wait to hear your voice again. And I can't wait to see you next week. All right, Mimo. God bless you. Hope you have a good night. Okay. And um, I'm very, very, very proud of you. I love you. Okay. God bless you, Mimo. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night, have Diana. a safe trip home. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Have a great okay. weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Rosemary from El Paso calling for the Polinsky in it. How you doing? Oh, just fine. How about yourself? Oh, uh, you it's know. million dollar you, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. Well, good. May blessings also come that way. Million dollars. Blessings. Every one, every time. Amen. Okay, I want to give a big shout out to my precious son. I love you, mijo. I miss you tremendously. Just want to let you know that uh, we've been pounded over here with the rain. And, uh oh, I got a, a leak in my roof, so I'm going to have to uh, fix that her up. Uh, it's, I'm going to have to probably do the whole roof now. It's already 28 years old, so I'm going to have to uh, get on it. Let you know that Precious and the family moved and moved closer over there to the old apartment you used to live in Socorro. I'll be sending you a new address. Um... I love you, mijo. I'm working. I'm just going to come over tomorrow and look at the roof as well, see what you can patch it up, maybe hopefully until I save up some bucks here. Uh, just letting you know that we're all praying for you, mijo. Keep your head up. Faith strong. Okay? Um, you're not forgotten. Never forgotten, okay? I love you, mijo. Sleep good tonight, okay? Sleep in peace with the Lord's peace. Be with everybody there. And God bless everybody. And good night. And may the angels camp around everybody. Okay? Bye, mijo. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Rosemary. Bye-bye. All right. Bye -bye. Good night. Early from Mission calling for Polensky. Thank you for taking my call. God bless you all. God bless you. Yeah, it definitely Hi, does. Thank you. Hi, mijo. This is Tia Early. Uh, just uh, thinking about you. And uh, hoping that you're doing well. I'm glad your mom was able to go up there with Tia Rosa, and especially on your birthday. I'm glad they were able to see you. Um, and uh, I think um, also uh, Aaron's daughter went as well. Uh, well, we're still here, you know, mourning, uh, mourning on, on Aaron's death. Uh, we still can't believe this, but it happened, and we just uh, lifting up the Patty in this time, and the whole family because we're in shock. But uh, we know that uh, the Word of God says that to die is also to gain. So um, we're here and just uh, lifting each other up and and caring for one another and uh, lifting you up as well. Me, I hope you received our birthday card. Many blessings and hugs and kisses from all of us. We love you. Uh, keep your head up. Uh, every day is a new day. And uh, I love you, mijo, and I, I wish I could be there with you. And uh, just uh, don't give up, mijo. I love you. And uh, here's your deal, Ray. Um, love you. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, I hope you're doing okay. Aquí estamos nomás viendo vistas en el TV. Ahora que estamos en retirement, en retirement, so no hay más que ver vistas y hacer el, que hacer en la casa. Y las mañanas me voy a almorzar con mi papá también. And, uh, I hope everything is going good for you. And that everything went well in your birthday también la semana pasada. Este, trying to get Frank, a ver si viene ahorita, so we'll see. Mijo, I just wanted to tell you, I know your mom told me you were sick, uh, and uh, try to get to see the doctor. Uh, just keep pressing on them and tell them that you need to uh, be checked out. Uh, you may be having that same condition, uh, and uh, you, you need to get uh, some kind of assistance. So... Uh, just like I said, you know, keep pressing on them so they can put you on the list so that you can see the doctor ASAP. Don't 
Don't dismay. I love you, and I'll be uh, praying that all infirmity be gone in the name of Jesus and that you're blessed by the blood of Jesus. Love you, mijo. Good night. God bless you, and may the angels surround you and everyone there. Love you, and keep your head up. Goodbye. <laughs> Good night, Sal. Miriam from Corpus Christi calling for the Polinsky unit. Yes. Hey, Hank, how are you? Like a million you know dollars man. every day. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Can I put this in? I'm on the show car. Thanks, Hank. I appreciate you letting me do that. I uh, wanted to say hi to the, the guys at uh, various uh, Messianic services. Uh, Wesley wants to say hello to his dad. Hey, Dad. Love you. See you this weekend. Okay. Uh, I want to just shout out to several other guys at the different units. Joe Gonzalez, I got your card today. Joe Gonzalez at the Wind Unit. Uh, thank you for that. And I uh, wanted to say, give a shout out to John Ramirez and all the men on death row in, at the Polinsky Unit. David, I love you, and I'll talk to you in the morning. But Carl and Sammy, I'll see you this Sunday. I'll see David, but I can't talk to him. And also I wanted to shout out to TJ Hernandez and Trotter. And uh, I got David's message from, um, from Claudia today. Thank you, David, for sending that. And I just wanted to send blessings out to all the guys at the various Sabbath, Sabbath units. And thanks for allowing us to do that. And I'd like to sing the erotic blessing to, um, for, the, for the end of the evening from Numbers 622 through 27. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, his shalom. <laughs> Thank you, Hank and guys there. I appreciate this, this uh, radio station. Thank you very much for letting us uh, do, give, well, give this all, shout out from all the guys in our congregation here. It's all about these calls. Thank you. Well, it's a blessing for us to be able to do this. Thank you very much. All right. Have y'all a great have evening. Bye great bye. weekend, y'all. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Okay, and Miss Linda's in, which will bring us to 33 shout-outs this <laughs> evening. Hi, guys. Um, I had some great visits at Polanski this week. I visited Kasul, Franklin Davis, Kerry Allen, Will Spears, Stephen Long, Ramiro Gonzalez, Emmanuel Kemp, and had just great visits at all of them. Um, and Samuel Solomon last Sunday. Tomorrow, I'll be visiting Stephen Russell at the Polanski Unit and Carlos Kidd. So, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. And um, I just want to say shout out to John Ramirez, Robert Frada, Jamie Cole, John Rubio, Danny Bible, Eugene Broxton, Billy Wardlow, Fabian Hernandez, Michael Gonzalez, Abel Ochoa, Patrick Murphy, Daniel Acker, Tony Medina, Fernando Patino, Garland Harper, Milton Gobert, Carlos Trevino, Stephen Russell, Dennis Hope, Greg Gomez, Jason Hernandez, Benito, Stevie, Derek Gales, Rubio, Carlos Bouchette, and Chucky. Guys, I'm going to cut this a little short tonight because we've got one more shout out. So I'm just going to tell you guys know who you are. I'll give you more of a shout out next week. Okay? Good night. Hi, this is Di. I hope this finds you all doing well and feeling fine. I have just a few shout outs tonight. First is to Gabriel at Polunsky. I really enjoyed our visit this week, and I just got your last letter and look forward to seeing you next week. I also have a shout-out for Virginia at Polunsky. I enjoyed our visit today. I sent an email to your friend. It was just a letter of introduction. I hope she writes back to me. I have a shout-out for Big Will at Polunsky. I look forward to seeing you on Monday. I have a shout out for Stephen Sandbloom at Darrington. Uh, I just sent out a letter to you. I have a shout out to Abel Pucho uh, Ochoa at Polunsky. As always, peace and love to all who hear this, as well as those who don't. Okay, that concludes uh, oil. Uh,
Uh, Mike says he's got one. Hold on. Yeah, I'd like to do a shout out to the uh, win unit, uh, Colton uh, Weir. Okay. That's the only shout out I have. Okay. Uh, now, I got a couple of quick announcements here. Uh, be sure and stay tuned for Night Sounds and uh, immediately following us, Radioactive. Now, next week, the prison show is going to uh, be talking about kind of a big news deal that's going on here in Texas right now. You may have heard of it. Kevin Stewart is going to come in and he's going to talk to us about the mistrial of a uh, former parole board employee who. Uh, may apparently may have tampered with documents went to trial and they called it a mistrial after only five hours which that seems a little uh, rushing it up a little to me however uh other than that uh, you know so y'all stay y'all will have the usual stuff plus that so uh so everybody tomorrow at last concert cafe at kicking off at about two o'clock is the 31st annual watermelon dance and summer social a kpft fundraising event so I want everybody to show up for that. Uh, it's $20 a head, $30 a couple. So it's not too steep. And then uh, August 26th, I've got Electro Love 2017. It's going to be hot one this year. I've got Bio City Funk, Pot Roast, Greyhounds, and Golden Dawn Orchestra all playing this year. So I want everybody to come out for that. That's a KPFT fundraiser. And you can go to Brown Paper Tickets right now and look up Electro Love LUV 2017. And get your tickets for five dollars off, fifteen dollars advance, twenty at the door. Okay. And then, oh, I also want to announce we just got the Friday night there for the pre-party for Electro Love, so I'm putting that together right now. But if you go online and buy your ticket now, you get in Friday free. Oh, that's cool. You just bring your ticket up, show it to them, and come back the next day with your ticket. Two for one. Two for one. <laughs> All righty. KPFT Thank you. Houston. Thanks, our community partners. Eight.